Welcome to the online stream of Faith Baptist Church in Suriname. Today is the 2nd of August in 2020. And uh, I have a little message for everybody. Uh, church is difficult these times because of the coronavirus and everything that uh, comes with it. But uh, it's important because uh, God, God's word is, uh, is effective in every situation. As long as you breathe, uh, you got something on God's word. And uh, today I want to uh, talk about the surety that is in Christ. So the surety, how can you be sure and uh, is there surety? And, and that's the most important thing. Jesus himself calls himself the rock that you can stand on. Some people build their houses on the sand and they will fall because it's not stable. It's not sure. But the rock is surety, and especially if, if, if it's God, of course. And um, I want you to go to uh, James, the book of James, uh, chapter 1 in the beginning. And we're going to uh, share the screen so that you can also uh, look uh, with us. And we already see that um, in First James... It says here, we're going to start reading from uh, verse 3. It says here, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. So it is for a reason when you are going to hard times, because it works your patience. And patience is very important. Even God calls himself the God of patience. It says here, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, so that you have everything. Verse 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. So you have to ask God, it says. And in verse 6, it says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So how should you ask? First of all, God says, look, you have to ask me. Prayer also means asking. So you have to ask him. That's a good thing. But then it says, how do you have to ask him? It says here, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that waver is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So let's stop here. So we see a, a couple of things. And this is just a little part of the book of James, just in the beginning. And it already says that uh, we go to tribulations, we go to things, because it makes our patience and our faith stronger. And if we ask things, so especially if you are in problems, you have to ask God, don't waver. Behind me, you already see a sea. The sea is, is, is he's wavering. The sea is never stable. It's never stable. And that's also life. Life is never stable. Sometimes, and me included, we, we, we think that if we got financially freedom, if we got financially everything, uh, we got a nice bank account filled with everything, and we got everything, then we can make our life stable. But that's not true. This is what something of many people are uh, pursuing. They're pursuing money because they think that money can fix their problems. And then they fix their problems and then new problems come that you will not fix. Like a disease. How many people get disease? They get an illness. And then they got all the money in the world and they can pay all the doctors they want. And the doctor says, we cannot help you. And then where you go? What, what is your next pursuit? So at the end, even if you think that you can fix your problems, something will be thrown at you. And, and you never expect it. It will come always from a direction you will never expect. Just like what, what the Bible says, uh, Jesus will come as a thief in the night. What does that mean? That you don't expect it. It's in the night, you, you, so you sleep. And a thief, a thief is very quiet. So he will come at a door that, that you didn't lock or whatever. Uh, problems will come with money or without money. With health or without health. Problems will come. But if you are a believer and you are right with the Lord, those problems don't come to tease you. Those problems come to make your faith stronger. That's what the Bible says. So if you are in a situation, good or bad, and you ask something of the Lord, don't be wavering. Don't be like, ah, oh God, I don't know. And I No, be strong. Be steadfast. We're going to go to that verse later. So it says here, let them ask nothing wavering, just like the sea. The sea behind me, what do you see? 
it, it goes left and right according to the wind. The same as the tree behind me. That way I have to point. The tree behind me is the same way. It, it goes left and right and it goes through the, uh, the emotions. You know, it goes with the wind. Where the wind is, there the tree goes. But God doesn't want us to live like that. We have to be stable. If we believe something from the Bible, we have to stand our ground. If we believe that something goes against the Bible, we have to stand our ground. And we have to know that, no, the Bible says this is not okay. And then you have to stand your ground. But most of the time, the, the world is making us um, feel uncomfortable if we talk about the Bible or stand our ground in the Bible. This should not be. And if we even continue in James, so we were in James 1, but then we go to James 4, chapter 4. I'm going to uh, share my screen again, and then we can look together to chapter 4. And then we go to 1 to 5. 1 to 5. Here the Bible says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? So where does all those, this, those things, those fightings and those, those wars, where the, where, where's the, the source, the Bible says? Well, it's because of the lust that is in us. And then we see in verse 2, Ye lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. So what does the Bible say? You have not because you ask not. That's why it's so important to ask. But you have to know how to ask. Look this. Look at this, verse 3. You ask and receive not. Because you ask amiss. That means you, you, does, you don't ask the right things. It says here that you may consume it upon your lusts. So if you ask things in lust, like give me this new car, give me this, this woman uh, that has already a man, give me this money because I can show the neighbors that I live good. Those things you ask amiss. Because you ask those things in the, in the form of lust. And then you see here, you adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity. That means that goes against God. It's enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So we see also in this part that um, you can ask God. God says, ask me. Even ask it firmly. Say it straight to, to the point. Don't be wavering. But don't ask amiss. Why? Because sometimes we pray for things that are not good for us. Oftentimes we think we need certain things, but God already sees in the future. He sees the past. He sees, he sees the present day. Uh, he is everywhere and he doesn't uh, abide to time. God doesn't live in time like us. So sometimes we ask a couple of things and God already knows that those things will destroy you. Those things will destroy you. How many times a man wants a woman and then he goes after and after and, and he gets enough uh, hints and, and, and direction from God that that's not okay. But you are stubborn and you do it anyway. And then this woman destroys the whole life. And then, then he goes back to God. God, why did you do this to me? <laughs> God is thinking, look, you did this. Again, we have free will. Free will is so important to understand that we make our own choices. So don't ask amiss. And how do you know if you ask something right or, or, or wrong? Well, the Bible says, is it based on lust? Is it based on lust? What is lust? Lust is not even to the opposite agenda. Lust can be also the lust of money, like the love of money, or lust of pride. Many people ask things in pride because they want to show others. But you have to know that if it is from the world, it is not of God. And that's why it says clearly, it says here, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, uh, of the world is the enemy of God. So if you want to be loved in the world and everybody wants to say, hey, this person is so great. Well, it, it's not from God. Most of the time, if you stand your ground about God's word and you do exactly what he says, then the world will not like you. They will not like you. For instance, the LGBT community. If you stand your ground on the Bible and clearly says what the Bible says, and the Bible says clearly it's a sin and even an abomination, Abomination is, is way worse than a sin. If you profess this thing, uh, 
you will not be loved of the world. People will hate you. People tell you that you're hateful and so on and so on. And people don't even know why people are like that. What is the reason why somebody profess themselves to be in that community? You don't know, but, but right away you get a label like, oh, you're wrong. You're wrong. Even the gospel. If you tell people that Jesus is the only way because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me, then people say, oh, you're hateful. But why is that hateful? You, you try to warn people. If that really is so, and it is so, of course, but if that really is so, and you tell people, you warn people, why, why you get hateful? But that's the same reason why Jesus uh, died. They put Jesus on the cross because what did he do wrong? He only can talk the truth because he is God. He is the living God. You got the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and those three are one. And Jesus could not sin. It was impossible for him to sin. God cannot sin. And what did Jesus do? Nothing, but he talked the truth. And people don't like the truth. And that's why they'd rather kill you than, than, uh, than come to the point that they accept this truth. So we have to understand that there is a surety in God, but you have to know what to ask. And then if you are closer, getting closer to God, and you know what his will is, then you don't ask amiss because you know exactly what to ask for. You don't need that car. You need just a car, not that a prideful car and then you receive it that's just for an example or a woman how do you know if you're not right with god how do you know what kind of woman or what kind of man you want to marry you have to know that you have to ask for a godly man or woman and these are all things that you learn from the bible how to ask and then it says you have not because you ask not so then if you ask in the right context and you ask god the things that are not of this world but spiritual things then you will get it. But you have to come to the point to know what to ask. And then everything you will ask, you will receive in my name, the Bible says. So know this very uh, thing. And also, if we share the sc uh, screen again, we go to 1 Corinthians. And that's exactly how you should live in every aspect of your life. We go here, of course, we read from the King James Bible. That's the only Bible that I uh, agree and we see here in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 1558. 1558. And you can read with me this verse. It says here, Therefore, my beloved brethren, it's the last verse of this chapter, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It says here, steadfast, unmovable. The sea behind me, is that steadfast? The sea behind me, the tree behind me, those are not steadfast. Those go left and right. And also the Bible talks about uh, being tossed to and fro with all kinds of doctrines. Because you don't know what the Bible says. You go with man's wisdom. That's not a good thing. Man's wisdom is wrong. That's the same as Eve got beguiled by the serpent because his... He, he talks so smoothly. He said so, so, such nice, nice things. And that's what people do. They say nice things, what you want to hear. They want the, the ears tickled, also what the Bible says. But that's not, sometimes the truth is not that great to hear. Sometimes the truth, it, truth is harsh. But you have to accept the truth. The truth is the truth, whether you like it or not. You can say, I don't believe that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. The truth and the life. Does that mean that, that it will change? Does that mean that suddenly then, then Jesus is not the truth? Or Jesus is not the only way? No, it still stands. It still stands, but you choose not to believe it. And that's what it says. The Bible says, be steadfast, unmovable. And it doesn't talk about you being move, moved left and right as your body, but moved by doctrines. One of those doctrines I am amazed at that some people just cannot understand is the, the doctrine of once saved, always saved. I have to explain it so many times to people that if you are saved, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. And you, you cannot be unsealed because God sealed it, not you. It's not with man's hand, hands that it is sealed. And that's why the Bible says uh, you are sealed till the day of redemption. So you cannot lose your salvation. So if you are very strong on this doctrine, and I am strong in this doctrine. I believe this with all my heart because the Bible teaches you this. Then if somebody comes with a new doctrine, I cannot be moved because I know what the Bible says. But if you don't know your Bible and you just listen to people, 
How can you be stand fast? How can you be unmovable? How? Because you have no, no stable foundation. You have no rock where you can stand on. Know your Bible. If you have a hard time reading your Bible, just try every day. You know, if you just read 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, you can finish the Bible within a year. That's doable. Okay, is that too much? Then read your Bible for only seven minutes. Seven and a half minutes every day. Then you, it's two years. But at the end, you, re, you, you read the Bible cover to cover. And I think for every Christian, that's very important. How you, can you stand behind your religion if you don't even, don't even uh, understand this, this book that's attached to it? And that's the same with the Muslims. That's the same with the Hindus. How can you know your religion? How can you believe, for instance, that Muhammad uh, is, is your savior and you don't even know your book? Sometimes people don't even know where he was born, how old he was. You don't know anything about your prophet. How can you give your whole soul to this, to this prophet if you don't know if there's even salvation? Know your Bible. And then you have a surety, a security and a surety that is in Christ. Read your Bible and you will see that there's nothing to be fearful of. It's all good. And people tell you, yeah, but there are so many terrible stories in the Bible. Yeah, but did God do those things? No, this is just a record of what people did. And God just shows you how, how many mistakes people do and how much, much uh, mistakes they make. So for this morning, uh, it's very important that you have to be steadfast and unmovable. If you ask God things, do it without wavering like the sea, but say it. In, not in the form of lust, not as the things of this world, but spiritual things. Just ask God the things that you think that is right on a spiritual level. So thank you for uh, listening to this message and uh, on to the next one. Have a great day.